Hey there, everybody. Pete Pardo here from Comic Book Geezers. Welcome to another episode of the show. It's New Acquisitions Day. We got Scott Barry here showing off some new stuff. What's happening, Scott? How you doing? Oh, not a whole lot, sir. Just uh, trying to stay dry on, on this nice rainy day we got going. I hear you. I hear you. It's a crazy thing. week, man. I, 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 I had car repair issues, both my wife's car and my car. So oh. that, that, that's uh, kind of expensive. <laughs> that's never fun. That's never fun, it's, especially yeah. when your car is past like the first couple of years stage, right? And you got lots of miles on it. It's like, you know, there's no more warranty. There's no more two years free maintenance and all that kind of stuff. That's never, never fun. Never fun. Well, my wife's is way past that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Well, good luck with all that stuff. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's the end of it for a while, right? Because you know, every yeah, now and then is not a big deal, but when you have constant car problems, it's like, oh, maybe it's time for a new one. God forbid, you know. So, yeah. Well, we we were wondering about that, but I think for now we're we're not going to do that just quite yet. Just yet. I hear you. I hear you. So Scott, uh, Scott's been doing some shopping, and uh, he's got some cool new stuff to show us. Uh, as always, I'm looking forward to seeing what he got because I'm sure he's got a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, uh, I, yeah, that's a good description. It is a bit of this and a bit of that. Um, well, we'll start off with uh, you know I've been getting a lot of magazines lately, but uh, not in the last couple of months. Uh, I got another creepy, no, or ninety which i love that cover yeah that's very cool yeah i mean it's not a pricey book but it's one that just i i had trouble finding lately yeah so, i've never seen that one out in the wild so that's uh definitely yeah. have that one that's 90 cool. 1977 i believe nice and uh i also got this one's kind of a tough one to find vampire tales super annual number one wow I definitely don't have so, that one. Look at yeah, that. And I, yeah, and uh, I don't know if you know anything about you know that you know you ha Marvel had their their horror magazine line, right? And they only they each lasted about two years. You had Vampire Tales, Monsters Unleashed, Dracula Lives, Tales of the Zombie, and each one of those, when they finished the series, when they were wrapping up, they they put out these uh, annuals. They called them an annual, and. They're primarily reprints, but they all had new covers. And the main reason I got this was that cover. That is that is an awesome. How can you not? How can you cover not? By uh, Bob Larkin. Ah, uh, that's awesome. Yeah, and I don't see this pop up too much. I've I never actually got this at my uh, my local comic store. They just happened to get I've in. Never it. seen it. Yeah, that's a good. That's a good looking one. Yeah. So that completes my Vampire Tales set. I had all the others. For a while but that one has been eluding me um, so getting down to the more uh standard format finally got a, this is one i had my own for a little while marvel premiere number one the warlock yeah. so this is the warlock's first uh or adam warlock's first uh solo yep. story Bill Kane. After uh, being introduced to Fantastic Four and uh, appearing in uh, Thor story arc in Thor. Still don't have that Thor issue. Um, uh, or the first one. I got the second one, but not the first one. Uh, yeah, pick, that I think it's come down a little price. So I might try yeah. to might try to get it. It's it's doable, Scott. I mean, I paid a good amount for it. It's doable, but it's I had to have it. <laughs> well, I, I kind of want it for Warlock, but I also want it. To complete my Thor run, which I I got pretty long Thor run from like 114 Journey to Mystery 114. It's the uh, first appearance of Absorbing Man. That's my first one in the run, and it ends around 280. Except for that one issue. I just missing that one issue. And that yeah, one you, run, you're gonna want to plug that hole. I know. I know how it, I know what it's like. Yeah, I've got a uh, my Thor yeah. run is <laughs> it uh, haunts me. Let's see what my thoughts. So I've got everything from 104, Journey to Mystery 104 to 308. Oh, that's pretty cool. That's a really long run. And I have uh you know, I have some in the in the 90, I have most of the 90s. Um oh, wow. and a lot in the 300s too. But yeah. I've got like a couple in the 90s, a couple in the low 100s, and yeah, the 114 
up to like 280 yeah that that's the streak and then i i don't have too many for a while and then i have like the whole walt simonson run after that which is like 337 up into the 380s i think yeah it's a nice run yeah um so also got one i got number two of the uh, marvel and those were both this one and the previous they're both gil kane covers and gil kane also did the interior on these yep yep so they're nice ones to add to the collection. Um, as far as Marvel premiere, I already had all the Doctor Strange issues that follow these. Uh, I am working on the Iron Fist. We'll get with that in a minute. Um, so after those two Marvel premiere issues, uh, Warlock gets his own title, number one. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I I've had the uh, the Starlin run for a while you know you had to like the, the four issues of strange tales and then you they they resumed the warlock numbering with nine uh up through 15 right those are good and that was the starlin run yeah those are good those for a while but i thought ah it's time i didn't get those gil kane issues with the early stuff uh so i'm still working on it here's number three don't have two yet Um, yeah like yeah. you i have i have all the starlin stuff and i need a bunch of those gil kane ones too i have some i don't have all of them yeah yeah i'm i've, I've got like four to go here um so here's number five. Oh yeah and we see and and all these uh warlock stories they take place on counter earth yep which is kind of like mortals kind of earth too i guess you could say yeah. Yep. Yeah, you have, you, have, uh, you know, kind of doppelgangers of every every character that's on the, the regular Earth, right? So you have a Doctor Doom here. Oh, this Doctor Doom turns out to be a good guy. Yeah, yeah. And the Reed Richards on this plant on Counter Earth turns out to be a bad guy. Yep. Go figure. Exactly. Uh, number eight, this is the final one before the the uh, Jim Starlin relaunch a few years later. So, yeah, because they took a bit of a break. It's, uh, I forget how many years it was, but it was a couple of years. Uh, I think two or three, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh my God. And getting sticking with Marvel premiere, I mentioned Iron Fist, right? There's number 17. Number 22. It's a pretty cool one. Yeah. 23. Now, remember we when I was doing the X-Men when I talked about there was that issue with Warhawk where here's Warhawk fighting Iron Fist. Yeah, yeah. Marvel premiere number 23. And there's 24. I think I've got four issues of Marvel, the the Iron Fist uh, Marvel premieres to get, including number fifteen, the first one. Uh, I, that's I one that. that seems to have come. Recent, uh, recently, recently, just got all the Iron Fist issues. So finally got number one, but the one that's probably going to be the tough one to get is number 14 for Sabretooth, and that one's pretty high. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought that off the rack back in the day, so I've had that forever. <laughs> it's it's going for so much money now, it's crazy. I couldn't hear you. Yeah, prepare to plunk down a lot of money. Um, also, weird one I kind of found at my local comic store recently, not Brand Deck, number one. So this was kind of a, a spoof comedy uh, title that they did uh, in the mid to late 60s. Ran about a, maybe 10 issues or so. And that's uh, Marie Severin did the artwork on, on most of these. Nice. Yeah, it's kind of it. a fun book. Yeah, it's not it's not a pricey book. Uh, 
And of course, got to have some horror, right? Chamber of Chills. Nice. Number three. Now, one thing that's... me about this most of these most of these uh, books that marvel was cranking out these horror books they were reprints of stuff from the 50s and early 60s this one this one had some new stories in it including a, a frank brunner one with frank brunner, brunner art so that was cool and there's number six yeah i have some that kind one. of a that's a good one a bog or mud monster yep And here's a first issue, Beware. Classic. Number one. Some kind of a, I don't, know, I don't think he's a werewolf. No, he it, it is a werewolf. He's a, kind of a different looking werewolf. Yeah, he's more like a cat creature, right? Yeah. There you go. Yeah, that, that's what he looks like. Like a panther. He doesn't have the snout. Right. Yeah. Um. Weird Wonder Tales, number three. And once again, you've got another uh, bog kind of monster, <laughs> swamp monster sort of thing. Yeah, there are a lot a, of those. There's a lot of them, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I got uh, Creatures on the Loose. Now, this one has some Kirby reprints in it, and you can tell that's a, that's a Kirby cover. Like a story from the fifties. I love those creatures on the loose. Those are so good. Monsters on the prowl. Oh, creatures on the loose, yeah. They're great. And then here's another creatures on the loose. Few issues later, when they're in the midst of the Gulliver Jones uh, saga. Yeah. I've been trying to get all these. I think I got maybe a couple more to go. It only ran about maybe six or seven issues. Yeah. Some great Gil Kane art in these. Yep. Uh, you know, just that's an awesome cover. He was really good doing that kind of like thing, stuff. Oh, he was great at that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, he did a few Conan issues, but I mean, Conan seemed to be pretty well covered between uh, Barry Smith and uh, John Buscema. So, yeah. I, you know, he didn't do too much of that. Yep. Um, another stack here. So um, these are rebuys. I, I had all of these, but I just like I, I kind of wanted to upgrade. I got uh, these are the final issues of the Tales uh, titles. Uh, Strange Tales number one sixty eight. Doctor Strange and Nick Doctor Fury. Doctor Strange, yeah. Nick Fury, and they each got their own comics after this. Doctor Strange's title continued the Strange Tales numbering. And Nick Fury got a number one issue. I never understood the logic behind when they did those. Uh, uh, behind what? The number oh, like the... starting like uh, instead of starting with issue one, like they they did the same thing with Shang Chi, right? Special Marvel edition ended at sixteen, and then they started Shang Chi's first issue at number seventeen instead of doing a number one, and they did the same thing with Doctor Strange. From what Strange. I've heard. From what I've heard, I think that was kind of a, a money-saving kind of thing. I, I think it cost them more money to actually launch a new, a brand new title. And and we're not talking huge bucks, you know. You think of a, the the kind of money that Marvel was making later on, and it's it's like peanuts. But uh, yeah. yeah, at the time they were they were pretty tight fisted. Hmm. Yes, <laughs> kind of strange. Uh, Tales to Astonish number one hundred one. That's a good one. Yeah. Before it became Incredible Hulk with issue 102. And then yep. Submariner, he gets a number one issue. So, yeah, these look a lot better than the ones I had. The ones I had were pretty pretty beat up. Uh, Tales of Suspense, number 99. Iron Man gets a number one issue. And Captain America uh, uh, continues the Tales of Suspense numbering with issue 100. Yep. I uh, got a few Iron Man from the early days. No, that's a good Number one. 13. This is second uh, part of a two party with the controller. Yeah, great villain. Oh, yeah. 
I already had number 12. So. I always thought it was strange art, though, to make the whole thing red like that. But it, it, the yeah. artwork was so good, you know? Yeah, every now and then they do, a, they do a cover like that, you know, sort of monochromatic like that. Yeah, the coloring. And they used red a good bit. Uh, number 17, Beginning of the End. That's a good Brandon one. I just got that one. Over Tony Stark. How can that be? Open, read the, buy the book and find out. <laughs> it's also the, the first issue of Madame Mask, uh, the first appearance of Madame Mask. Yep. It would be a nemesis, uh, a re regularly recurring nemesis. Um, and sort of romantic interest. Too. Yeah, I was going to say, I love interest. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like Batman and Catwoman in a way. Absolutely. Um, yep. And uh, there's number 31. Still in the 15 cent era. Uh, got a few Captain Americas. Now these are later on. I'm pretty fixed on Captain America from like the first uh, Tales of Suspense, his first Tales of Suspense issue. Got all the Tales of Suspense issues. Got all the Captain Americas from like 100 to like 350. Oh wow! Uh, kind of getting a few of those post 350 issues. Here's number 352 from like 1989. The Avengers. taking on the Soviet super soldiers. Hmm. Uh, there's number 353. Again, with the Soviet super soldiers, we remember the Red the Guardian. Guardian. Yep, yep. Or a version of the Red Guardian. And then this one, number 354. Um, I don't know if you know the storyline of John Walker. He sort of his replacement Captain America for a while. Well, he becomes kind of his own superhero. He becomes the U.S. agent yep. here after Steve Rogers returns to being Captain America again. And that one's sort of a, a key. Uh, and then a more recent, well, I say recent, this is going on 20 years old, but uh, this one is kind of, I, I've been looking for this. I've had this, I've been, I've had this run for a while, the Captain America, uh, this is Captain America, I think it's the, it's either the fourth or the fifth series, they did a lot of relaunches, 90s and, and onward, and uh, I think this is from 2005, during the uh, the Winter Soldier um, storyline, and this is the issue where Bucky is revealed to be the Winter, the, the Winter Soldier is revealed to be Bucky. Gotcha, okay. Right, and uh, th this this uh, storyline figures pretty heavily into uh, Cap the the movie Captain America: The Winter Soldier, and then yep. also in Civil War. Yeah. So yeah, yeah these, this that. book has spiked a lot in recent years. I don't usually pay a lot for books that are this recent, but it was like the only one I was missing. And I was like, ah. Got to do it, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a great. It, it's just a great. I, uh, Ed Brubaker is the writer on this. I, I read just about everything this guy does. He's a great writer. Uh, whether he's doing superheroes or whether he's doing uh, like crime stories, he's got a, a book called Criminal that Image puts out. Uh, does a lot of uh, like crime fiction, and uh, but I, 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 I get everything he get he puts out. And uh, the artist on that is Steve Epting, and the art, the interior art is damn near as good as that cover. Okay, yeah, the cover is great. Yeah. Um, also got some DCs some from the Distinguished Competition, as Marvel used to call them. Um, new you. Gods. Kirby. Two. Kirby. Yeah. So I now have all the New Gods issues, the, the Kirby New Gods issues, uh, except for number one. And I got a couple issues of Ghosts, which were kind of kind of cool. Yeah, those are always good. I always like these. Yeah, it's a Nick Cardi cover. I love his uh, covers. And here's another one, number 22. That's great. Full fighter. <laughs> And well, that might be a Cardi. I think that's a Cardi cover. Um, still finding some old Batmans. 
like I, I i'm still missing a few issues of batman between like 64 and 67 and i believe that's a carmine infantino murphy anderson cover it's a nice one uh, and then this one this is a rebuy of one i had it it's pretty beat up now. Gene Colin. But, uh, Gene Colin from the Gene Colin run, uh, or like circa 1982. Yep. And I, what is better than Batman and a vampire? I mean, <laughs> and I love this storyline. Batman actually gets turned into a vampire in this storyline, which is pretty cool. Yeah. And if you can include a vampire, you might as well get Gene Colin to draw it, right? It's... Oh, yeah. I mean, who better, right? Yeah. Um, Another DC, uh, a Flash issue, number 194, about 1970, I think. And that is a Neil Adams cover. Thanks. And we're winding down here. Uh, a little more Batman. I got Batman Family. Getting close to finishing off my run on Batman Family. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is number 17, and that is a Michael Kaluta cover. Didn't do the interior art, unfortunately, but basically the, the, this was a, what the, the, the dollar size uh, comics that DC were doing, yeah, like in the late 70s, yep. early 80s, and uh, they were about 80 pages, and uh, I don't I think this one says no ads. Yeah, all new stories, 80 pages. I don't know. Some of them had ads, some of them didn't. But uh, yeah, you had five different stories in here. Batman, Robin, Batgirl, The Huntress, and Man Bat. Love Man Bat. Oh, Man Bat's awesome. And I also got number 18. And I believe that is a Michael Golden cover. And we got Man Bat again. There you go. Nice. And last but not least, continuing with the Batman theme, I just got this from Amazon yesterday. Batman uh, Beyond. There you go. Big paperback. And this is like, this is about 30 issues of uh, the first 30 issues of Bat the Batman Beyond comic. Yeah, it's, it's a very acclaimed comic series. Yep. Yep. Yeah, based on the animated series. I don't know. You ever watch any of those, Pete? Any of those? I've seen uh, some here and there. Yeah, and I saw the the film, yeah. right? The, the first one they did. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's good. People love. Yeah, them. I mean, I, I I I think they've done just an awesome job on this uh, Bat the Batman animated series and uh, the Batman Beyond, I, and they've done a few um, like kind of standalone movies videos. Yeah, and it's just great stuff. I mean, I, I, it, it's kind of a streamlined look. You know, uh, sort of a simplistic kind of kind of artwork but uh it works i like it yeah i will say dc's animated stuff is generally top notch you know it's funny how they struggle yeah, I, with the films but, but their animated films are great uh i i think the batman animated series is just is amazing like you can watch oh, those yeah. over and over again they're, they're still so good yeah and i think they're just they're very true to the to, to the spirit of the comics that's the whole thing yeah yeah for sure yeah. I'm, I'm not sure there's any other thing that's really been quite as true to it that, i mean I, I, you know there's some good movies too but uh there's also some kind of wonky movies that don't <laughs> don't hold up too well that is true that is true yeah but they and still, sometimes yeah. it's like okay how dark do you go with it you know that, that seems to be a, a, an issue too i it seemed my, I, there were i liked the last one they did uh, i did too yeah the batman uh, yeah with uh, Robert Pattinson, I, I thought he was a good Batman. I think his Bruce Wayne needs work, though. Hundred percent. I, I don't like his Bruce Wayne at all. As Batman, he's really good. So yeah, yeah, yeah. They're hit or miss for sure. I, I don't mind the dark stuff though. I, I like dark Batman. That's just me. It's I like dark Batman, but I guess I, there's a point where it's just like how how how, how dark do I want it to go? Yeah. <laughs> true. True. Yeah. For sure. I guess I have my limits on that, and I, I don't, I, I don't want Batman to just be like the Punisher, you know. I don't want him to turn into to that. True, true. Yeah, that, I, I like Detective Batman. That's what I. Oh like. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And, and sometimes, and some of the more, uh, that's one thing that was good about the recent one. I think that we, we did see more of the Detective Batman, which we really yeah. haven't seen much of in a while. 
Right. And I think Ben Affleck's Batman also does pretty good on the detective side, although Ben Affleck plays a great Bruce Wayne. Yeah, he's great at that. And I, I remember when he was first announced to be Batman, everybody was just like, what the hell? You know? He did a good job. I really liked him as Batman. I, I like Christian. Yeah, I liked him as Batman. But unfortunately, he's, his debut as Batman was in uh, Superman versus Batman, which was not the greatest movie. I mean, he, he, he but he was not the worst part of that movie. No, he wasn't. Yeah. Long shot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that that they just had writing problems, and the, the, it was just the whole thing felt very rushed, which I you know kind of ruined it for me. But I enjoy it, but it's yeah, it's not one of the best movies for sure. So yeah, cool. Well, there we got some cool new stuff that Scott picked up. Lots of good stuff there. Yeah, Lots of good stuff. Yeah, always always good to see the new purchases, right? That's that's exciting when that new box comes in the mail, or you go out to a comic store and you actually find some things you're really looking for. Uh, that's it's always a lot of fun you know it's like the three it's like the thrill of the hunt because the curse is real folks. they're both there yeah absolutely absolutely oh, it so, yeah. certainly is yeah so thanks scott for coming on once again and thanks everybody for watching uh please subscribe if you haven't already and click on that notification bell so you get alert of all of our content as it posts and please do hit the like button before you leave also if you want to support the channel uh down in the uh video description there's the link to the sea of tranquility merch page where you can get a comic book easer shirt and uh, or a coffee mug so thanks in advance for everybody for coming on for scott barry imp Pardo. we'll see you soon here with more stuff on comic book easers take care everybody bye-bye Bye-bye.